Well, let's talk about Zimbabwe's economic future. I'm joined now by economist John Robertson from Harare. Good to have you with us, John. So uh, Emerson Manangagwa says he wants to improve the economy. He's promised to create jobs in the short term. What is he going to have to do? In the short term, he's going to have to bring about policy changes that encourage investment to come back to the country. We've had the most appallingly bad investment incentives for many years now, as Mugabe's government wanted to absolutely control everything, and they imposed the most severe restrictions on everybody and demanded that every new investor gives away half the company to indigenous people. This has prevented new investment from coming in, which has prevented their job creation. It has made us dependent on food imports, and it has prevented the country from earning the money needed to settle its international debts, and it's prevented the growth of industry that could have employed millions of our young people. So assuming that he's going to um, change uh, economic policies to attract foreign investors, where's the cold hard cash going to come from? Uh, are we looking at uh, China, at the US? No, I think we're looking at the separate investors, thousands of whom might bring the money they need to start the businesses that they want to start in Zimbabwe. We used to have thousands of separate factories. This was one of the most industrialized countries in all of Africa. And today, most of those factories have closed. So we can restart making the basic goods, the food, the clothing, the footwear, the furniture. We have factories that could restart to make all of those goods, but we need the investor to come in with the capital to restart those businesses. So how have people been coping with these economic problems and this, this cash shortage until now? I mean, is, is it all about depending on family members who are working abroad to send money home? Many of them, maybe half the country, is dependent on assistance from abroad, from family members. But the rest of the population has been living on very little. We have downsized our businesses. We have reduced the scale of family expenditures to live with what we've got. And so standards of living are very much worse than they ever were before. And I think this is what people are looking forward to now, the ability of more members of every family to have a formal job and not work on the streets as street vendors for just a few dollars a day to contribute to the cost of running the family. So it's been a very poor standard of living that I hope everybody can now recover from and we should have a very much more prosperous community within a few years of getting new investment inflows. John, interesting stuff. Thank you very much indeed.